say something real quick and it should trigger Xanax. I think I have heard, it, heard Xanax say that the Earth does not rotate underneath these objects and these things. So if you want to go to Xanax, that might trigger him to explain. Well, we don't need too much trigger in there. I see Xanax has come in under the Ball Busters protection plan. That's a pretty smart move. Now, better follow the zero tolerance rules. Go ahead. Ah, okay. As, as uh, Paul mentioned, yeah, the Earth doesn't rotate under objects that just depart the ground, a balloon or an airplane. When planes are flying east or west, they're flying in the air mass that is rotating with the airplane. The momentum is given to that plane before it takes okay, off. Okay, stop. That so stop. Please define the Coriolis effect. And I want you to cite the source. And I want you to put it into Ball Busters. I think everybody text. knows the. No, everyone doesn't, so, please. Coriolis is an apparent deflection of objects moving in a rotating reference frame. Wrong. That is the truth. And that is what it is. The effect of the Coriolis effect from the University of Oregon is an apparent deflection of the path of an object that moves within a rotating coordinate system. The object does sudden. not actually deviate from its path but it appears to do so because the motion of the coordinate system you are incorrect uh, that is exactly what i told that you. is no, not I'll, what I'll, you just can, said can i clarify can i clarify no you can't so you, keep on, you keep on confusing the reference frame of the observer from the inertial to non-inertial if you're looking at an object from the non-inertial reference frame it appears to deflect yes it always will appear to deflect from the inertial reference frame it will not appear to deflect you keep on going back and forth between the two reference frames, and you're confusing yourself. That, and that your would audience. be two different reference frames, uh, Nick. So you have, you have you're, that's you two different reference frame frames, correct? Pardon me. You know, a reference frame is a, an environment for which you view motion. No, you you just that, mentioned yes. two different reference that's frames, sir. That's what a reference frame is. You it's just mentioned. Hold on for a second. How many reference frames did you just mention? I mentioned two reference frames. Okay. Thank you. So we have one rotating reference frame and one non-rotating reference frame, correct? Right, right. What, what is the rotating reference frame? The rotating reference frame is accelerating or rotating. It's the Earth in this scenario, correct? If the Earth is rotating, then it is, if you're viewing motion from the Earth, then it is the non-Earth reference frame. Yes. Okay, what is the inertial reference frame? A frame of reference, an environment of observation of motion that is not rotating or accelerating. In this scenario, what is the the inertial frame of reference? Some place out in space. Oh my God! Okay, oh, I just, <laughs> I'm out. Science class. You need to pay attention, Quantum, because you've been saying this for three right. years, and you're still. Right. Sorry, can I interrupt? For just one second. I listened to your descriptions, Zanik, and both of them were observational reference frames. That's what a reference frame is. Right, but in the this example, is an environment for which you view motion. Uh, get her five words out with Sonic. So, in this example, if we have a fixed observation and two reference frames, one non-inertial spinning reference frame and one inertial reference frame, then that would be the application of Coriolis to a spinning Earth. Correct. The non-inertial reference frame would be the spinning Earth. Correct. The inertial would be someplace in space, not rotating or not accelerating. Rotating, correct? Not rotating, not accelerating. That would be the inertial reference frame. And the only way it could be rotating would be if it was attached to the rotating reference frame, correct? No. The, the reference frame, again, is an, is, up, is an environment for which you view motion. You can have as many reference frames as you'd like. What is the atmosphere refer reference frame in this scenario? The atmosphere on the Earth is in the rotating reference frame. <laughs> wow. Like, people always mock what they don't understand. Sir. Yeah. The atmosphere in the oh, but hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll look at this. So the atmosphere in the Earth is the same reference frame. Pardon? Clarifying your position, you said the atmosphere and Earth are... The non-inertial spinning reference frame. Is that correct? correct? I'm just yes. clarifying what you just said. Yes. It can be in a well, non-inertial reference frame. Remember, an environment for which you view motion. Just, uh, sorry, it's I wasn't asking you. You're in clarity, Zanik. Zanik, don't ask me to hold on. 
was clarifying your point to make my point. You've hesitated to clarify your own point. We've got a yes. Now I'm going to make my point. If your claim is that the Earth and the atmosphere are a non-inertial spinning reference frame together as one, then there is no Coriolis deviation on Earth. Of course ever. there is. You, you, you actually mistook what I said. I'll say it again. The environment for which you view motion. So if you're viewing motion from the non-inertial reference frame, as in on the Earth or in the atmosphere, then that you are in a non-inertial reference frame. That's incorrect. So you, that is not incorrect. It is, is incorrect. So we just showed you, you that. You got to check yourself, Quantum. You got to check yourself. Right. And uh, Betty. Uh, yeah. 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 Talk. Challenged. Any chance you can actually let him respond rather than just telling him he's wrong when he hasn't actually qualified him saying you're incorrect? <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Go ahead. I'm not. I'm, I'm finished, Nathan. Okay. So when you throw a ball on a mirror run, for example, the ball doesn't leave any reference frames. You are looking at the ball from a non-inertial reference oh, frame. God. So it appears to deflect. It appears to deflect. From an inertial reference frame, it looks like it goes straight. It all depends on what coordinate system you're looking at it from. That's why you have to understand what a reference frame really is before you can actually have this discussion. And that's been confused for three years as far as I've been, as far as I'm concerned on this. Okay. Right. Let me, let me, you can talk me through it, Danik. Let's just see how we get on. So let's take the Earth as the non-inertial spinning reference frame in this example. I'm going to beg the question. You all love it. And we've got a football on a playing field. Okay. And they're both rotating together as one. The ball and the ground right that's so they're both part and parcel of the non-inertial spinning reference frame right when the ball's kicked into the air it would be leaving the non-inertial frame of reference no, no. that's the first mistake you've made. no well not no. according to neil degrasse Tyson. according no, no. to neil degrasse Tyson, yeah sorry zanik zanik excuse me i'm still talking you According to Neil deGrasse, can you shut him up, Betty? Because yeah, he's I just I rumping the shit out of my conclusion. Can you shut him up, please? I Thank did. you. Yeah. So, while you might want to disagree with me, Zanik, Neil deGrasse Tyson tweeted out to a bazillion people that that was very specifically a demonstration of those two separate reference frames. According to Neil deGrasse Tyson and his tweet, calculated by the best mathematical boffins of this world. He stated that upon leaving the non-inertial spinning reference frame of a spinning ball Earth, we observed from the stands what looked like the ball curving. But it didn't actually curve. It was the Earth rotating underneath, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson and his tweet about Coriolis and the two separate reference frames that were experienced by the ball when it left the spinning Earth and entered, according to him, an inertial reference frame. So you're saying, hissing in the face of Neil deGrasse Tyson, that both atmosphere and Earth are as one, spinning together. But that would be in defiance of Neil deGrasse Tyson's explanation that when the ball leaves the spinning reference frame, exactly as described by Coriolis deviation, that we see it seeming to curve. It's not. It's Earth turning underneath, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson because it left the spinning reference frame exactly as described by Coriolis deviation. So you saying that they travel as one, number one, air can't be bonded. That's air, it's gas. It's not bonded to a spinning earth. That's your first problem. The second problem is your explanation of earth being bonded to the air violates how gas works, and wouldn't give you Coriolis, as described by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now, I don't know who you are, Zanik. You're just some muppet on the internet, as far as I'm concerned. But Neil deGrasse Tyson definitely understands what Coriolis says effect is to the degree that he can go and tweet about it whilst watching a football game and telling everybody how it looked like it curved but didn't earth turned underneath to cause the goal to happen, and then go around the circuit on very national television telling people how two reference frames caused that ball to seem like it curved because earth rotated underneath the ball when it went through the atmosphere, Zanik. So you're shite 
about them being traveling together is just some nonsense babble assertion from some complete nobody on the internet. You're wrong. Neil deGrasse Tyson asserts that we have got Coriolis effect when the ball leaves the spinning reference frame because that's what Coriolis effect is. The only problem with Neil deGrasse Tyson's assertion that when the ball leaves, it experiences a apparent deviation if we're watching it from the stands is that if Earth's turning underneath the ball to make it seem from the stands like it's curving when it isn't, then the Earth would also turn underneath planes, which also leave the non-inertial claim to be spinning reference frame of Earth. And planes don't experience Earth turning underneath them in the same way as Neil deGrasse Tyson asserted that the Earth turned under the ball, a la Coriolis effect, because that's what it is. Two reference frames, one spinning, that would be Earth, and one not spinning, that would be the air that the ball travelled through, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson. However, if Neil deGrasse Tyson's right, and he seems to understand Coriolis a bit better than you, you seem to think that you've got to go to outer space to experience something that you can experience on a bloody roundabout, but you're just an idiot on the internet. Neil deGrasse Tyson understands the actual religious rhetoric of a spinning Earth having Coriolis, two reference frames, causing balls to seem to deviate because Earth's turning underneath, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson. And if it's turning underneath that ball as it travels through the air, it's also travelling underneath the plane that's flying over the stadium. But the plane doesn't seem to experience any effects in the same way that that ball is claimed to experience those effects. And you seem to be here to obfuscate that point by claiming that they travel together and convoluting what two reference frames are necessitated by Coriolis effect. That's all you're doing, muddying the waters and projecting that we don't understand that you need two reference frames, Earth and atmospheres, the two reference frames in an Earth-based Coriolis assertion. You're going to tell us that we don't have Coriolis because they travel together. Because you're a scumbag hey. troll. Yeah. Here to lie. Let let let's wrap this up in one simple statement. His definition of the Coriolis effect is wrong. I'm gonna ask him one question. Okay, Betty? I want you to take him off mute because we gotta wrap this up. We're gonna wrap it up really quick. My question is Does the air, atmosphere, and clouds rotate underneath the earth? In your paradigm, Zanuck, yes or no? That depends on which direction the, the winds are blowing. It doesn't depend. Does the Earth does. rotate underneath the atmosphere and clouds? We can explain for five minutes. Can I just have a minute? I want a yes or a no, please, Betty. This is a yes or a no question. You already said, I'm just clarifying. No, you already said that, oh, Betty, please. You have already said, Zanuck, that the Earth and the atmosphere is one reference frame. That is, the atmosphere rotates with the Earth. I'm just clarifying. I want to make sure that is your position. That is it, your position. Is it your position, sir? The air moves with the Earth. It okay. Isn't rotating. Stop him. Not directly. Stop Not him. Directly, Betty, Betty, please. Betty. Stop him. That's his position. Danik's position is that the Earth and the atmosphere spin together. He is categorically wrong. From the Coriolis Effect, Seagar Douglas, Introduction to Ocean Sciences, we already went over this. When set in motion, freely moving objects, including air, that's atmosphere, and water masses, that's clouds and water vapor, move in straight paths while the Earth continues to do what? Rotate independently. Because freely moving objects are not carried with the earth. It's over for you right here. You do not understand the definition of the Coriolis effect. That's it. You're done. Last comment, Zanuck. I'll give you the last word. Okay. So I appreciate your, your uh, understanding of Coriolis. And there are some points that you are tr you're correct on, but many you're not. I'd like to just say that. Coriolis is an effect, an apparent deflection when an object travels in a non-rotating, non excuse me, non inertial reference frame. And if you're going north or south, that, that will depend whether the Earth rotates. It doesn't matter. I already went over that definition too. Well, Let's put an end to I, it. I was just saying that you are incorrect. Per Seagar Douglas, right here in front. Everyone's looking at this right now. I just read it. 
You said that the air, the atmosphere, rotates with the earth. This definition says it does not. Conversation's over. The end. Thank you very much. Just like to point out one thing also. He just misrepresented what the Coriolis effect is with his reference frames. So he got the reference frames the wrong way around. So he said, when an item travels in the non-inertial reference frame. Coriolis is an effect in apparent deflection when an object travels in a non-rotating, non excuse me, non-inertial reference frame. Well, no, the item would travel in the inertial reference frame. Correct. He doesn't understand the Coriolis effect. So he's come here to tell us we've been what, confused for however long he said we were confused for, but then he's just simultaneously described the item, as per his words, traveling in the non-inertial frame of reference. And that isn't Coriolis effect. The non-inertial reference frame is the spinning reference frame, not the frame of reference the item travels through. So he doesn't understand Coriolis effect. He doesn't understand which reference frame is which. And he's just projecting his complete ineptitude onto us as per usual. Yes, sir.